Hey, Dr. C with you. So does fasting hurt your thyroid? Well, let's talk about this. Uh, quick synopsis, there are some versions of fasting that can slow your thyroid, that can cause it to make less hormone and cause your body to convert that hormone less efficiently. So it can be a concern. Um, and we'll talk about some terms to clarify. So we think about fasting overall, and in general, I'll refer to that as just no foods for set periods of time. There's IF, or intermittent fasting, and there's TRF, or time-restricted feeding. Now, those sound similar, but the idea is a little different. So intermittent fasting, you're choosing windows in which you will not eat. <laughs> time-restricted feeding, you will choose windows in which you will eat. <laughs> and that sounds academic, but the practicalities are such to where you often have narrow, narrower windows in time-restricted feeding. And also we've got protein-sparing modified fasts, and I'll mention those a bit too. So just some general thoughts. The idea is that we think that fasting, the changes in fasting, are ones that allow your body to adapt to lower food intake. And that makes sense. You know, our ancestors, when they had no access to food, their bodies had to adjust to that. And they did that by slowing their metabolisms. And one of the biggest things that controls metabolism is thyroid function. So one study of time-restricted feeding, this was a 16-8 pattern. What that means is feeding was restricted to an eight-hour window. And a common way you'll hear about that is people will eat from you know, noon to 8 p.m. But the essence of it is that there's 16 hours a day in which people will not be eating. And the thought is that longer times of day without food gives the body more of a chance to repair cells, to break down old cells, to regulate the blood sugar. But this one study showed that those that were free of thyroid disease, they showed a significant drop in T3 levels, but no change in TSH. And this was one in which they weren't losing weight. So their total food intake didn't go down, but by narrowing their food window, they did slow their metabolisms by decreasing their T3 output. And what we now know is that there's, there's different contributions that different pathways have on regulating thyroid hormones. And these can be radically affected by fasting and also by illness. And often the biggest thing that occurs first off is a drop in T3 levels, sometimes also a drop or an elevation in T4 levels. When this goes on long enough, it's not uncommon to see TSH levels get higher. And there's a lot of ways in which the peripheral use of thyroid hormones, the way they're used outside your thyroid, that can also change. One of which is your body will actively break down less T4 into T3 and make more of it into reverse T3. And we'll also see that your cells they become more resistant. They will block the entry to thyroid hormones. Now, this has been looked at also with lower protein diets. And it seems that low protein diets can have similar effects on thyroid hormones, even if they're not starvation diets or low calorie diets. And what happens is the body will lower T3 level to spare muscle loss and prevent the amount of muscle loss that occurs. Another thing that's been studied is uh, fasting as per Ramadan. So those who are doing more so a time-restricted feeding to where they're only eating during the hours of darkness. And it's been shown that this can lead to a significant change in overall thyroid function. People with thyroid disease were found to have their TSH scores roughly double. And the higher a TSH score is, the more one's thyroid is underactive. So they, they went up. It was noted, however, that there wasn't a dramatic change in symptoms or quality of life. And they also saw that the TSH elevations could often require changes in medication for those who were on treatment. An interesting thing, the duration, how long that lasts, it can commonly be as much as five months after the fasting is over. So if Ramadan were to end, you know, January, end of January, we could see that it could take until June before full thyroid function came back again. And this was a, a in the study that I'm referring to, they were doing a window of time in which they were fasting for 15 hours per day. So almost just like the 16-8 TRF that I mentioned before. And during that time frame, what they saw was that the overall weight change was about 0.4 pounds less, which was not too significant. And what that means is they didn't have a big caloric deficit. 
So they weren't so much starving. They were only eating during that window of time, but they were eating almost exactly as much food as they would have otherwise. And the interesting point about that is it makes us think about any changes to thyroid function being less relevant about the total food intake and more relevant about the food timing. And we've seen that when it comes that when food timing is not restricted, that you generally need a calorie reduction of at least five to 700 calories per day to have a big shift in thyroid function. And in this case, because of the weight change, they probably didn't have more than a 52 per day calorie deficit. So from the studies on Ramadan, which are the most extensive, it seems plausible that going for long windows of time without eating food, even if you're eating enough food, that that could slow your thyroid and it could cause your body to use thyroid function and thyroid hormones differently. Now, we also have protein sparing modified fasts, and that's, that's a version of fasting that I use in the metabolism reset diet. And this one's different because it's quite thoughtful to give a maintenance amount of protein and to still have food timing rather frequent throughout the day. And then also it's using high amounts of fibers like resistant starch to keep blood sugar pretty stable and steady throughout the daily process. And we've seen that protein, mo protein sparing modified fasts, they can get benefits of weight loss without seeing the decrease in thyroid function. That's when they're curtailed to windows of under six weeks. So papers showed that more than six weeks, you could start seeing metabolic compromises, but you could get up to six weeks. And I was conservative and I went for four weeks with metabolism reset diet. We do know that a four week window is safe when you are getting protein, when you are getting enough fibers. So if the goal is just general health and weight loss, fasting can be a simple way to do that. But by doing a protein sparing modified fast, you're less apt to move into the zone to where your thyroid's being slowed down because of it. And the perks about that are, well, your thyroid will stay healthy, so you won't have as much adjustments to worry about that way, but also you'll be seeing less suppression of your metabolism. So your weight loss efforts will end up being more effective. In general, we've seen some studies about intermittent fasting, time-restricted feeding. There may be more benefits that will emerge over time. We may see they're helpful for some conditions. But so far, those with thyroid disease, it seems that Protein sparing modified fasts are the safest version for them because they won't cause these impairments to thyroid output. All right, Dr. C with you. Take great care, and I'll see you real soon.